Today we're going to take a look at DJI's brand new RS3 Mini. Now right here I have it with the Sony FX30, Sigma 18-35, a VND filter on the front, and Sigma's MC11 adapter so I can get good autofocus with this 18-35, that's EF mount, on the Sony camera. And I am just blown away with the type of quality I can get using this setup. Now if you're new here to the channel, lately when it comes to super small gimbals, I've been using Jane's Crane M2S and it actually broke on me while I was in New York using it to vlog a few weeks ago. I'll put a link to that video in the description below. Essentially, I was using that gimbal for ultra lightweight setups for real estate and events. Now I have weddings coming up that I needed to be able to use bigger setups than I could fit on the M2S. And that's where this RS3 Mini came into play because this is probably the biggest, heaviest setup you could fit on this gimbal, but it's perfect for a full day of shooting. This gimbal itself weighs under two pounds and this camera setup weighs under three pounds so in total I'm holding about five pounds right here and I could run with this all day. Now today's video is going to be more of a first impressions instead of a full review because I haven't been using this gimbal long term but I want to talk about the pros and the cons of using this gimbal with cameras like the Sony FX30, the Canon R7 which we're using to film right now and also talk about using it with the Red Komodo because believe it or not you can use it with the Red Komodo but you are gonna have to do some modifications to the gimbal itself. So this gimbal works primarily its best if you're shooting with mirrorless cameras with small to medium sized setups. So when it comes to features of this gimbal, it can take camera setups weighing up to 4.4 pounds, which this setup is pretty much like just right there. You can control cameras via USB-C like I'm doing right here for the FX30, or you can do it over Bluetooth. And that's going to depend on what camera you're using for compatibility. Now, I specifically use the USB-C because when I plug it in, it just works. I can start and stop recording, control F-stop, ISO, shutter speed. But the other thing I can do is when I need to charge the camera, I can use the same cord that I'm plugging into the RS3 Mini and plug it into a power bank or this little V-mount where I can get power delivery straight into the camera using the same cord so I don't have to go find a cord. So that's really more for my use. Some of you may want to do Bluetooth and if your camera is compatible, I don't see any reason not to because then you don't have to worry about about bringing an additional cord. Now, unlike the RS2 and the RS3 Pro, the battery is actually built into the entire gimbal itself. So although overall weight-wise, the RS3 Mini is smaller than both of those gimbals when they're set up, you can't make the Mini quite as compact. So there is that to notate. It's one of the reasons I really like the M2S because even though you can't take this apart either, this gimbal is so small, I can fit it in backpacks where I will note that the Mini I've had to put outside of my backpacks. Not the biggest deal, but it is worth noting. Another thing to note about the Mini is its lack of features compared to the RS2 or the RS3 Pro. Now, if your camera has really good autofocusing capabilities, you don't need to be using the LiDAR, the image transmission system, or a manual follow focusing system, then the Mini makes a lot of sense because it doesn't give you those options. Really when it comes to the auto locking feature, you're not gonna get that on this gimbal. However, for me, the auto locking feature was never really a selling point. It's one of those convenience things where it's cool to have it, but it's not necessary. However, if you do need those, then I would probably still stick with an RS2 or an RS3 Pro. There is one NATO rail on the side here where there were two NATO rails on each side of the RS2, RS3 Pro, and they also had some software functionality if you had the right accessory that would connect to the pins. So it comes down to functionality. This is basically a bare bones gimbal, but if you need to save the most amount of weight as possible on set, whether you're shooting weddings, events, documentaries, real estate, whatever it may be, and you're not coming close to maxing out the total weight allowed on the RS2 or the RS3 Pro, that's where the RS3 Mini is definitely gonna make a lot of sense for you because believe it or not, the weight savings you get from having a much lighter gimbal will help you a lot, especially if you're gonna hold this for hours at a time. Now you may notice there is a manual focus wheel on the front of the RS3, and I mentioned that it's good to use cameras that have really good autofocus. Now the reason I still stand by that is although there is this manual focus button in the front, it's really only gonna work properly 
with cameras that have really good autofocus because it can control the autofocus motors in order to give you that quote unquote manual focus feel. If you're shooting manual focus, especially, I actually was able to fit a Canon R7 with the Saray Super 35 anamorphics on this RS3 Mini, but it didn't really make that much sense to use that setup just because I don't get any manual focusing options on this gimbal. Now I bought this DJI RS3 Mini because if you haven't been following the channel, I've been filming a lot with the Zhiyun Crane M2S and the Sony FX30 with the 11 millimeter. And it's crazy that I was able to get all of that and a wireless audio transmission system on this little gimbal and get really good smooth shots. I used it a lot for vlogging, I used it a lot for real estate. However, I ended up breaking this gimbal and I won't get into the customer service nightmare to get this thing fixed, but it just didn't make sense to pick up another one. And with the release of this RS3 Mini, I purchased it right away because especially with these weddings I have coming up where this is really the setup I need to use on those weddings. This gimbal made the most sense because I can use a little bit of a heavier setup than I could fit on the other gimbal, but also run with it all day. Not only do you look way more professional having a setup like this, even though the gimbal is smaller and lighter, then you do showing up with this little thing. I definitely got some stares in some of the real estate gigs. When the clients saw the footage I got from this setup, the clients didn't say anything because of how amazed they were with the quality I was getting. Now, if you wanna use the Red Komodo, you can, but you're gonna have to make a few modifications. Number one, you're gonna have to use your own Arca Swiss plate because the plate that comes with the DJI RS3 has a lip on it, so it won't work on the bottom of the Komodo. It also is raised a little bit higher, so there's that as well. Then on the actual plate the Arca Swiss goes into, you're gonna have to actually remove the safety pin in order to be able to slot your own Arca Swiss plate on. Depending on the Arca Swiss plate you use, you may not have a safety anymore. So do that at your own risk because if you're not properly locked in and you try to hold the camera like this, without the safety, it will just come right out of the gimbal. So do be aware of that. The last thing you're gonna wanna do is actually mount the bottom plate that goes to the RS3 gimbal and mount it in reverse on the Komodo beforehand. That way you can tighten it on because without mounting it in reverse, you won't be able to get the Komodo as far to the right as you need to in order to balance which is gonna create issues when it comes to balancing. When it comes to lens and battery combinations on the Komodo, I've really only been able to use Canon 16 millimeter, their 50 millimeter, and their 35 millimeter on the DJI RS3 Mini, with the 35 millimeter actually putting me very close to being out of balance. When it comes to batteries, I've really stuck with putting one BP battery on the right side in order to help with balancing. Now, I do wanna thank Scott Balcom because I saw him putting the Red Komodo on the DJI RS3 Mini, and I did some inspections and I saw taking the pin out and whatnot, but I didn't know if that was necessarily a thing to do that would break the gimbal. And Scott took the plunge, I spoke to him about it, and he told me all was good if you take it out, just make sure you keep it if you wanna be able to put it back in. So I do wanna thank Scott for helping me with that. I'll put a link to his channel in the description below so you can check him out, got great content. Now, when it all comes down to it, if you're a Red Komodo user, no, I probably wouldn't buy the RS3 Mini if all you have is the Red Komodo or all you plan on flying on the gimbal is a Red Komodo. But if you have other mirrorless cameras that you basically be using this gimbal with all the time, then, I mean, if you wanna do those modifications to put your Komodo on, I can see why you'd wanna do that. It's why I did it. However, I just have to put that disclaimer out. If you're just gonna use this with the Komodo, probably not the best gimbal. It's better with cameras that have much better autofocus. The autofocus on the Komodo, as you may know, it's good. It's just not as good as some of these cameras. Now, as I said, this is a first impressions review video. This isn't a proper review. I wanted to have the camera in my hands for at least a month or two before I come out with a proper review. So if you have any questions about the DJI RS3 Mini, you have anything you wanna see in my full feature review, make sure to put them in the comments below. If you got knowledge and value out of today's video, please make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to keep up to date with the latest videos from the channel. Channel. And until next time, my name's Jeff Fagan. Thank you for watching, everybody, and I will see you in the next video.